Good morning all. Today I thought I'd have a look at a classic battery charger, the Duracell CEF23. So this is a four slot uh, nickel metal hydride, double A or triple A battery charger, um, which can be powered from the mains. You've got these two uh, little springy contacts here. And the UK version was supplied with a UK adapter plug, which just snaps on there like so. Uh, the downside of this cumbersome arrangement on the back is that the high point is this sliding catch. So when you put it on the table it kind of rocks around. It can uh, also be charged from DC 12 volts which appealed to me because uh, I could use it on my solar power system. So here's 12 volts. Uh, it's actually 13 volts today. Um, now the odd thing about this socket is it's very deeply recessed so the plug doesn't stay in very well. So you've got to find a long reach plug. So I found this uh, two way splitter, um, female to double male. Now the plug length is just a fraction longer than uh, this one here which wouldn't stay in. So this should be fine, that will stay in there. Right, let's plug my solar 12 volts into the unit and there it is, the batteries start charging. Uh, red means charging and green means charged. Uh, flashing red I think means that there's something wrong with the batteries. And this blue light down here means that this is running as a battery charger and not the other mode, which is really this thing's special feature. And uh, that special feature is that this battery charger can be used as a USB power bank. It's actually got a USB socket on the front here and if you press this button and hold it for a bit the USB light comes on and now these batteries are actually providing power to the USB socket. So if I plug something into it like this little torch head it lights up and we've got a self-contained power bank, actually a flashlight at the moment. So four Duracell AAs to USB. Really neat feature. Now I've kept some of the uh, bits and pieces that came with this because uh, I'm a bit like that. I've got some uh, information instruction leaflets and this bit of, uh, well it must have been sat on the front of this thing I suppose. And it says here that um, four charged batteries are required for USB device charging. And what it means is that in order to provide 5 volts on the USB output socket, you need all four batteries in the charger. Let's just try taking one out and see what happens. And the USB output goes off, so it won't run with three batteries, it needs all four of them. So I always wondered, are these in series? In other words, is it simply adding up the 1.2 volts of each of these cells and feeding them straight to the 5 volt output or are these in parallel and therefore it's uh, using some sort of um, boost converter to generate 5 volts for the USB output. Always struck me as uh, rather strange. Uh, but the features of this thing go even further because if I now plug in the 12 volts I can now remove the batteries and it's now working as a 12 volt to 5 volt USB step down converter. So again is this running in switch mode or is it just a linear regulator doing this? It's an intriguing device. Now you can also uh, attach the mains uh, uh, attachment to here and have this thing plugged into the mains and have it work as a mains down to 5 volt uh, converter so you can charge things from mains using this just basically as a 5 volt USB power supply. These days though this thing is showing its age a bit. It's not terribly useful. I mean one of the things you'll see on the back here is that the um, 5 volt USB output is only half an amp and half an amp these days really isn't enough to charge many things with power banks offering 2.4 amps 500 milliamps is a bit uh, feeble, so I don't use this a lot these days. And uh, from all this stuff you can really see the age of this thing. 
it says here charges iPod and other USB powered devices has a picture of an iPod and a digital camera and here a games machine and whatever that thing might be and a shaver and uh, this one says copyright 2008 Duracell uh, it also says here now with Duracell rechargeable pre-charged batteries so this must have been around the time that the LSD batteries were coming coming in the low self discharge batteries the sort of uh, always ready type batteries now I must have bought these uh, battery chargers I actually have two of these um, when they were being sold off cheap probably towards the end of the product's life I mean, maybe when the USB uh, half an amp thing was uh, starting to become a bit um, unusable so what I thought I'd do today is take one of them apart because I'm actually quite intrigued to see how it produces 5 volts from the four cells whether they are essentially in parallel or series and when they're charging does it to have a common ground for example and then does it rewire the whole thing to put them in series for when you're trying to get 5 volts out I honestly don't know I thought it'd be uh, worth a look inside so the screws are Torx T6 rather small little Torx screws let's take them out So really what I'm looking for inside is lots of switching elements that may be rewiring the cells from uh, a common ground arrangement for when they're being charged. Because you can actually charge any number of cells in this. They're independent charging slots. You can have just one cell in there or two or three or four. Can't get that one out. Right, I think I'll take this lid off. We don't need that. And then how does this thing come apart? Have I got all the screws out? Oh, yes, I appear to have done so. Okay, well now, annoyingly, there's a link wire to uh, a board there for the switch, but there are screws on there, so I might take that board off this uh, front piece of casing. So let's get that off, and then I can... Uh, look at the thing without the front panel a bit flapping about and getting in my way. There we are. So what have we got in here then? Well clearly there's a main section here, live and neutral uh, come up on these two points here. Four diodes for bridge rectifier, uh, transformer and an opto isolator for the switch mode um, mains to DC step down lots of uh, capacitors here what's that thing there that might be an inductor now there's a, an open inductor here or a toroid inductor here which is probably a buck converter for the 12 volts down to a lower voltage and then uh, just a load of links on the board here so all the clever stuff the microcontroller must be on the back of this board uh, there's another inductor down here or a couple of inductors possibly and capacitor capacitor there by the USB and then the little board with the switch and the two blue LEDs so all the intelligent stuff must be on the back uh, one thing one other thing I've noticed there's a couple of uh, temperature sensors here thermistors probably with uh, thermal paste on them and they were pushed up inside these two uh, plastic areas here not particularly good thermal conductivity I, I wouldn't have thought into the um, charging bays I'll just tip this over with these screws out and have a look at that so no there's just uh, the thermistor sitting up in these and if you flip them over it's just these raised plastic sections so it's measuring temperature through the plastic not a particularly effective way of doing it but I suppose eventually uh, the temperature would get through to the thermistor. Now I'm having trouble getting this board out. The bottom section seems to lift up fine but the main section I think might be glued in. There's a little bit of yellow gunk up there on the top so I might have to uh, start levering that a bit. 
Right, that's the board out. Uh, you can see the live and neutral uh, springy metal connections. They were tucked down the back of this um, sort of plastic insulating uh, sheet. And there's a lot of stuff on the back of this board. So what I can see on the back of this thing, um, this looks like, uh, well, it's a Holtec HT46R53A. I'm assuming that's some sort of microcontroller. There are two uh, eight pin devices, one here and one here. I haven't looked uh, closely at the numbers yet. There's also an eight pin device here uh, with some of its pins sort of common together in the main section. So I'm guessing this is a, a main switch mode controller IC. I'll take a look at the number of that in a moment. But I'm particularly interested in whether these, which are these four metal terminals, which are the negative battery terminals, are common together and they don't appear to be because these run down to uh, link wires which jump all the way down to here and it looks like uh, one comes down to I think this point then it goes through this device to the next uh, terminal which jumper links across to this point through another similar what looks like a five pin device to this point which I think is the next one so no, these negative terminals of the individual cells are not common together. They're actually split by these uh, five pin devices. Similarly, on the positive side, it's these fat pads here. They're not common either. In fact, they all go to one of these SOT23 three pin devices. So it looks to me like there's no commoning between the cells, either on the positive side or the negative side. So it's perfectly possible that this device charges the cells with them essentially in parallel, or at least with some sort of common ground or a common positive side, and then rewires everything to put the cells in series in order to provide the uh, USB output. That's uh, not by any means for certain, but it looks like it has enough switching elements in here to be doing something along those lines. Now these two 8-pin devices are an AZ358 and an AZ393, so I'm guessing that they might be an LM358 and an LM393. Uh, I can't remember whether they're comparators or op-amps, but they look like they're part of the analog circuitry. I can't very well read the markings on here, but it's very clearly in the main section. It's just a mains switch mode controller there are a lot of switching devices on this board. I think I'm going to count them up. So there are actually about 30 um, little sort of transistor uh, SOT23 type devices, um, including four of these five pin uh, SOT23 devices, which could be MOSFETs possibly, um, but there are a lot of transistors on here, a lot of switching devices. Now, while these cells are charging, I've just wedged them in there. There's actually 1.5 volts difference between the two positives. Let's take a look at the potential difference between the two uh, negatives. And uh, that also seems to have, it's jumping around a bit, but um, possibly a 1.5 volts difference in potential between the two negatives when the cells are charging as well. Let me put two cells in at opposite ends of the bays. And uh, that's interesting, that's also measuring 1.5 volt difference between the positives. Uh, that's odd, let me try slots one and three. And that also seems to be about 1.5 volts difference. So they're not common um, while they're being charged, but equally they're not stacked. So it's a curious arrangement. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And uh, just one more measurement between the ground points or the negative points uh, between bays one and four, 1 1.5 volts again. So I'm getting 1.5 volts between the same point on different cells, pretty much wherever I measure it. Very odd. Uh, one thing I'm getting in USB output mode between uh, the top one's negative and the bottom one's positive, I am getting 5.7 volts 
uh, that seems quite high, but then they are they have just been charged. So certainly in USB mode, it does look like they're stacked in series. Uh, let's see what voltage is actually coming out of the USB, see if it's actually the same. And uh, no, that's actually different. I'm getting 5.78 volts across the four cells, but coming out of the, that, that would be too high for USB. So coming out of the USB, I've got 5.2, 5.17. So there's some sort of um, regulation down. Now, is that uh, linear or is it switch mode? There is an inductor down here near the bottom of the board, but there wasn't much on the back just the one main microcontroller. So interesting, I'm not quite sure how that's being done. So although I don't know exactly um, what this thing's doing between the two modes, the battery charging mode and the USB output mode, um, judging by the voltages that I measured um, at these various points in those two modes, and the sheer number of switching devices on the back of the board, 30 transistors, it's fairly obvious that this thing is being rewired to some extent between these two modes with the cells all in series for USB output mode, although it doesn't appear that it's passing the uh, battery voltage straight out to the socket. There's some sort of um, voltage drop involved there, um, possibly just a diode drop, who knows. Um, but then the cells being reconfigured in some way, it's hard to say exactly how, when the thing is in battery charging mode. So although this thing's a bit past its sell-by date, I've actually got quite a lot of respect for the engineers who must have been told, right, we want a battery charger that can also double up as a power bank. And when they sat down and thought about how you actually do it, they realized that there's a lot of complex switching involved to get the cells uh, in series for USB and in some other configuration. It's not exactly uh, parallel or common on one of these... Um, negative or positive buses but uh yeah complicated stuff and uh you know big respect to the engineers who uh, who did that so that's the uh duracell cef 23 a surprisingly innovative product from a brand name like duracell to combine uh, a battery charger and a usb power bank in one device and this thing did have a bit of a following amongst the um candle power guys and the budget light forum guys because of its uh, sort of unique features. And uh, it's a big shame that this thing is pretty much redundant now because it has this uh, very low power half amp USB. And to be quite frank, it's not the sort of battery charger that I would choose to use these days because I tend to only use battery chargers that have uh, some sort of voltage indication. I don't like the ones that just have the uh, the red and green lights. But uh, there it is, it's a product that uh, responded to the demands of the iPod era, but uh, now it's really quite useless. I should chuck it out really, shouldn't I? Cheerio!